Hello, welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to talk about making the real tool of Project Titan. So in Houdini, let's now get started by making a geometry network first, since we want to make some geometry. And in here, we're going to start out by uh, adding a curve node. So we can just add the curve node here. And in my scene, I want to draw a curve, and that curve will, of course, then represent where my rail will be going into. Before I do that, before I start drawing, I would also like to view my grid. So I actually know how large my drawing will be. And I can also here enable the snapping option. So we can here enable grid snapping. And of course, I also want to make sure to switch to our main handle to then actually draw our curve. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more until I have something like 25 in range. So 25 units or something like that. So we have like some spacing here. And before I start, I'm going to actually change the type to Polygon. I will often use Polygon because this is very simple and basic input to have in control. Uh, I can also switch it here on top as well. And we're going to zoom out and make sure we have like some decent size. And let's draw a shape that goes like this, for example. And press enter when you're done. Then once we have that, I want to do like a small cleanup step. We can do that with the face node. So we can basically clean up uh, unnecessary data or points here, remove inline points. And for that, we're then also going to do a resampling pass and actually going to add more points. And these points will then evenly be uh, spread along the curve. What is important here is to actually use here, treat polygons as a subdivision. And as you can see, like this will make the curve round. So this will do like sort of like a subdivision pass and make it nice and round here. And once we have that, I want to do another face node. And now you will actually see why the face node will be here. So when we enable here, remove inline points, and we now enable here our point view, we can see that the face node is deleting unnecessary points here. And what we will do in this case is we're going to increase this value slowly. So this value should be quite small, of course, and we're going to just uh, set 5, so 0, 0, 5. And you can see that now we are going from like this quite high dense polygon type into like a more lower poly style. And now I can use this information to then uh, instance my models. So of course, there are a few ways on how you can make this real. What I will do is I will instance models on the lines you see here. If I have a big model, I will instance them, I will instance them on the bigger lines, like you see here. If I have a small model, I will instance them here on the small lines. So my system will automatically pick the correct model and put them on the right position here on the length here. You can also just, for example, like do a classic sweeping method and sweep a shape here. So for example, here we just like sweep uh, like an actual geometry shape. Uh, over that line. But of course, this will add more polygons. Uh, we are just instancing models. So that's one way of doing this. So I thought it would be interesting to cover more about the instancing steps here. So let's take a look at how we're going to do that. So we're going to use a node called convert lines. And this node, what it will do is will, it will break up each line into single primitives. So I can now select each of them individual, as you can see. And what is also interesting is if we open our attributes, we will now be able to see the length of each line. So now I know that this line is, uh, this line is here. So this is almost like 10 units long. And I can just see here the other length information. So I have that all now available uh, to then filter on. To make things a bit more visual to, or to write our small logic here, we can also just use a wrangle node. There are, of course, multiple ways on how we can do this. But in here, let's just write some basic knowledge about how we can get and visualize data. So we can say that, of course, we want to run over the primitive results because the primitive is holding this rest length. So we're going to say run over primitive. And we can just simply use an if statement. So if my at rest length is, for example, bigger than 3, uh, then uh, we can, for example, give it the color of red. So the CD means color, and then we say that this is value of red to RGB. So when I do that, you will see that now these lines are all bigger than three, and they will be colored in a red color. 
Now we can basically do the same and I can just copy this over here and I can make, for example, another if statement. And now we can basically say that if this would be smaller than three and bigger than, for example, one, so we can grab here this part. So bigger than one. So if the value is between uh, one and three, we will then have, we for example, have then a green color. So let's color that green. So now we can see that these are turning green. And then we can just uh, do another if statement. So I'm going to copy that over here. And then we're going to just going to say that if they are smaller than one, then uh, our value will be the blue color. So here we have that blue color. So this is like a very basic way of like visualizing this data a bit more. So VEX can be pretty useful to handle things like this to, for example, filter out data on what you need to have. Now, to improve this, what we can also do is we can assign a group for each part. So I now can say that this is, for example, the group called uh, large pieces, and this is then value one. And we can just basically copy this now, and we're going to make this here as well. And this is, for example, instead of large, we can call this medium pieces. And here as well, to the last part, instead of using large group, we can say that this is the small pieces. So we not only like visualize them, but now if I would place the blast node, I can now just say that I have either large, medium or small. So if I want the small pieces, I'm going to invert that. And now I have the small pieces. So this is a quick trick. There are other ways on how we can make groups here, but this is like the fastest way on making a group is to say that we want to say a group and then we give the name of that group. And now I can just quickly filter out the data. So let's maybe start out with the larger parts first. So I'm going to here say large parts. First thing to do is I want to make sure that the lines are back attached in one piece. So again, they are still separated. So we can use a poly path node uh, to merge them back together. So now they are just, as you can see, I can only select the full amount of them. I cannot only select one, they are both selected. Then what I will do is I will do a resampling. And this resampling is basically then uh, setting the size. So just call this size. This is then the size of my model. So for example, if I know that my model is, for example, uh, eight units long, I will type in eight. And this will then be used to then define how many models can fit into the line. So you can see that we had like a couple points here and this will now be placed differently. What we can do here again is we can use the convert node again. So convert lines. Again, this will break up the lines and it will calculate the, rank, the length value. So the length value will now be different. So in here, I filled in my length or the my, my, uh, my ideal length should be eight, uh, but I only see that my curves have like size six. So I, would kn I know that my model has to be scaled with that as well. Next step, I'm going to do a, a primitive split. So primitive uh, split node. And we just place the node and we disable the attributes. This actually means that we're going to split the primitive. So if I move this primitive, they are actually detached from each other. So here they are attached if we don't do that. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want to now do a primitive uh, properties. And with this node, all we can do is we can do a transformation and set the scale to zero. And what, you will, what we will see is that we'll actually now have calculated the middle of the line. So this is now the instancing point or the pivot point of my model. So in a moment, what I will do is I will just actually grab my model. But for now, let's just grab a box and I will do a copy to points. So I will copy the box to the points. So of course my box was like eight units. So I'm going to press eight and I can see that they are of course not rotated fully in the right direction, but that's what I'm going to fix uh, next as well. So further, let's look at the data that we have here. Uh, we just have a bunch of points. I, I notice here that either you hold like middle mouse, I have actually six of them, but I actually see three. So it's recommended doing a few after that. Uh, so this will merge them. What can happen of course is that 
uh, we need to uncheck remove repeat repeated vertices and we also don't want to recompute uh, normals this is for uh, later on to make sure we're not uh, recomputing normal data then let's also look at uh, the orientation of this and i'm going to go back here and in here i'm actually going to use a poly frame nodes so when we still have our line data these lines i want to calculate the normal direction and the way i will do that is i will disable here the normal and i will fill in the normal in the tangent so we're just going to press n over here so if i now enable my normals you can see that they are going uh, in the direction of the line and let's check if my normals uh, don't get deleted so here at the primitive node i can see that my normals are getting overwritten so i'm going to here remove that so we are not deleting that and let's see how that works and that works uh let's maybe change my box uh here like so and we can see that they're now along those lines the only thing left here is to actually set up the scaling so I can see that the area will be bigger than my lines and we need to actually use that rest length value. So here we have those uh, rest length values and I want to then use this value later on with points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a promotion of that. So promote attributes and I will just plug it in uh, over here. And what I will say here is we're going to promote from primitive to points. So we want to promote the rest length from primitive to point. We can also give this like a new name if you want to, because you can just call this like scaling available or something like that. Uh, but that's up to you. Now, what is left here to do is then bring in another wrangle node. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say at scale is equal to, or is equal to setting couple values. So we need to set three values. So if I just say one, 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 then of course we will just have the scale of one so it will not change anything so if I, for example now we play around with uh, this part here let's see how much that will change you will see that we are squeezing this in the x-axis so let's change the scale here then of the z-axis so if i would lower this you can see that this is what we need to have so what i will do here is i will ask my rest length here so because we just uh, convert it into points, so I can just say rest length and we need to divide this by eight. So the, the eight value is currently the size. So eight is referencing to what we had here. So eight. And what you will see now is that we are now perfectly uh, fitting the boxes on the lines, as you can see, they are just perfectly in that area. Now it's basically the system on doing that. So I explain it now for one part and we're going to basically do this for then the other parts as well, but just on like different sizes. Now let's grab this setup and make a copy. And this is then for example, for medium pieces. So delete large and now say medium. The system will be then fully the same. Uh, the only thing that changes is of course the size. You can probably like give this color a node, like green, and we're going to set this to four. So the size of the medium pieces are four units. And we only need to change here as well, this to four. So maybe also give this a color. You can probably also give this a better name, um, like scale or set scale. I want to copy then this one more time for then the small pieces. So delete this, say small pieces. And then the small size is uh, one, so one. And then the scaling of that is then here with the one. So I can also now uh, view this by having multiple copy two points now. And of course, multiple boxes. So let me grab a box for each of them. So we have four and this was one. So you can see that you can actually just Quickly plug in your own values. If you made your own modular set, you can just plug in your own set of values. So merge this together. This will be mainly now for previewing. So we can see what's going on. So you can see that this is basically what we are trying to create. So we can nicely see that they follow the curve with instancing models. 
And notice that maybe the rotations here are maybe slightly off and the rotations here are currently set or controlled by the polyframe. So what if we select the polyframes of all three and say maybe first edge? That looks a bit better. So you can see that you can play around with this, uh, but of course you might get weird results. So first edge was somewhat better. So by just selecting them, they are all now set to first edge. So you can play around now actually also with like the, the scaling of this, like maybe you can make it like a little bit bigger. As you can see, like adding a couple more smaller units so you can like have some feel that they are actually more attached. So again, but this is mainly a system where we're going to yeah, instance models, like we're just instancing three models instead of making like a whole unique piece, which is also of course possible if you want that. So it's like up to you uh, what you would like to have. And that was it for this video. So we took our curve and we took that and we break it down into three parts. We have a larger, medium and smaller parts and we each for them we then figured out how many models can be placed on that uh, line. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.